Welcome to the Pen Tool Tutorial Part 2. This tutorial is going to pick up where we left off on the original Learn the Pen Tool video. You can view that video by clicking right here. That video will give you a foundation of getting started with the Pen Tool. That video also covers the Pen Tool with kind of sharper corners. This part two of the pen tool is going to deal with creating paths that have rounded edges. You can also view a couple of my other helpful videos. This one here, Symmetrical Tracing, explains how to create symmetrical images by creating one half of the image, copying it, flipping it, and then connecting the two images together. And then this one down here at the bottom will explain how you can use layers and how you can get the most efficient use out of those layers. So go ahead and click on those videos if you want to take a look at them. We're going to dive right into the pen tool tutorial now. So let's get started. You'll notice that I have an image here in the center of the artboard. Now what I've done is I've purposely made this image quite a bit fuzzy. And the reason for that is we're going to look at tracing images that are curvy and where we would want to actually place the anchor points to maximize our efficiency with using the anchor points. By maximizing efficiency, what I'm referring to is using the least amount of anchor points and getting the most out of those anchor points. So let's take a look at a few of these paths here and we'll see where we want to place the anchor points. One thing I want to show you real quick is I've got three different image qualities for this same image. So let's turn on the visibility for the three quarters quality and you'll notice that the smoothing kinda gets a little clearer. If I go ahead and go to 1x it's even a little better. The reason why I wanted to show you that is because if you get an image from a client or you're working on a project that you have to recreate a logo or a certain illustration you'll want to have a good grasp on working with low quality images because the object is to recreate those images with the pen tool so that they can be scalable to any size without losing quality. So I'm going to go back to the low quality and we're gonna work with that so you can see what it will look like once we're done. What I'm going to do is select the pen tool over here in the tool, tool panel. You can also just push P on the keyboard which will select the pen tool. So you'll notice I have a sharp edge here on the left of this path and then a sharp edge on the right. I also have a dip right here and a dip right here. I'm going to go ahead and place my first anchor point on this left corner. Now when we get to curves, we want to place the anchor point in the lowest possible point of this valley. And so you can kind of see where it flattens out right there. That's exactly where you want to place that anchor point. And then you want to place the next anchor point on this corner here and then the final anchor point right here in the middle of that flat area and then we'll place the last anchor point on the original and you'll see that there's now a very tiny circle that's indicating that you're closing the loop of this path so we're going to go ahead and click that now let's grab the direct selection tool you can click it here or just click a on the keyboard and what we want to do now is select one of these two anchor points here. So let's do the bottom one first, and we're going to convert the selected anchor point to smooth. When we do that, we're given two handles on either side. We want to use both of them, and we want to manipulate the section of the path that corresponds to its handle. So I'm going to grab this left handle and hold down the shift key. When I do, the handle snaps into the horizontal position, which is exactly what we want. Now I'm going to bring this over just a hair. Now you'll notice that I can only take it so far until it kind of doesn't do what I want anymore. So I'm going to just take it right about there. Now this right one, I'm going to take all the way here. Now it's really up to you how precise you want to be with this. For the right side, I'm okay with leaving it just right there. But if I wanted to adjust this anchor point, I certainly could, and get this exact fit, which is actually what we're going to do over here. So you'll want to click on the left anchor point and then convert that to smooth as well. At this point, we don't really know if we need this right handle. So I'm going to bring it in all the way to the anchor point so that it disappears. And then that way, I'm left with the left handle that I can just manipulate and get right in position. 
Now you'll notice that when I bring it in right to where I want it, it actually causes the bottom here to stick out a little more. So I'm going to have to grab this first handle that we worked with and bring it in slightly. And then you'll notice that it caused that section of the path to go in. So I'll just bring that handle out a little more. And then this in a little bit, it kind of takes a little bit of uh, trial and error till you get it just right. But you'll notice that it's pretty perfect right there now. And then this middle anchor point, we're going to convert that to smooth. And then grab that handle and bring it in. And pretty much it's going to work. I'm not even worried about fixing that area. So, and then we're gonna take this last one and bring it in. Now I'm going to give this element a, a red color just so we can tell the difference here. When I go ahead and turn off the visibility to this low quality layer, you'll notice that everything is very smooth. So you don't see those fuzzy lines. That's because we're working with a vector graphic now, not just a, an embedded JPEG. I'm going to turn the visibility on to that layer again. And let's take a look at this one here. The reason why I want to look at this one is because you can tell there is a curve here, though it's very slight. I'm going to grab the pen tool again. Now I'm going to add an anchor point to this corner here. I'm going to also add one here and here. And then this corner. And you'll notice that I'm getting the fill. That's because I added the fill to the other object. That's okay, we don't really need to worry about that just yet. We're gonna turn it off in just a second. And then we're going to close the path by clicking on the original anchor point. Let's go ahead and grab the direct selection tool now. And we'll change this fill to none so that we can see what we're working with. What I wanna do is I wanna grab all three of these anchor points and convert them to smooth paths. Now that they're all converted to smooth paths, I can grab an individual anchor point and just bring that in. Now I want to, I'm not gonna hold shift here. You'll notice I can hold shift, and it, but it's not gonna give me that perfect aligning to the original art there. So I'm gonna just pull it in slightly here. I'm gonna leave the handle over here and I'm going to convert this one to a smooth anchor point. Now I'm pretty sure I'm going to need this handle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold in Alt, or option, it's option on a Mac, alt on a PC. I'm gonna hold in that key and then drag this handle in. Now it's very important that you hold in the key first so that you actually manipulate that handle. I'm gonna undo that. If I grab this handle and then hold in the alt, you'll see that I got a double cursor now. What that's doing is that's making a copy of the path, which isn't good. So you'll notice that it appears as though I lost the top half of this path. What it actually did is it created a new copy of this segment of the path. And if I hover over, you can actually see that the original path is still there. So I'm gonna undo that. Just remember that it's very important that you hold down the option key first and then pull in the handle. And what that does is it allows that handle to be manipulated without affecting this one. So it gives you a sharp corner, but a smooth curvy path. And then I can grab this one and pull it in slightly. I'm going to grab this handle now and pull it in. In fact, I'm going to hold down the shift key on this one so that it constrains it to a vertical handle. And then I can bring this one in just a tiny bit and it gives us what we want. And then this last Anchor point, I'm going to bring this up. I'm holding down the shift key so that I can constrain this handle to the vertical here. And then I'm actually going to nudge. I'm, I've selected the anchor point with the direct selection tool. And I'm just gonna nudge it to the right a little bit and down just so we get that slight curvature here. So you'll notice that I've created some smooth anchor points and some sharp anchor points and that gives us the look that we want. I'm going to change that to red now as well so that we can see what that looks like. You're going to do this type of work for all the remaining elements of this artwork. Using the pen tool, you're able to do just that. But the important thing to remember when trying to maximize the efficiency with your anchor points is anytime you see that flat area, we'll look at this guy's rump to show you what I'm talking about. 
wherever you see that flat area is where you want to place an anchor point. So right here, I'd, I'd place an anchor point here and here. And then if I come up here, I could probably get away with one right here and then one right here on the corner. And, and then at the bottom, this is going to be a little tricky. So I could place one right here and just have it curve right to that point. And so I wouldn't have a handle on this point. It would just curve right here. Or I could try to do a handle on this one and have it curve around. It's really just playing with your anchor points and trying to see what works best, but to try to have as few anchor points as possible. So let's take one more look at this, this one right here. And we'll just do one more quick one. I'm going to choose the pen tool. And I'll do a quick anchor point here. And then I'll bring that here. And then I'm going right into that flat area. And then I'll come all the way down here. And you'll notice that the color is starting to fill. As soon as I click here, it's going to go backwards. So I click right in here. And then I'll close off the anchor point. So I'm going to choose A. I'm not too concerned with, with these ones up here. I'm just going to select these two here and convert them to smooth anchor points. Turn off the fill. And then I'm going to hold down the shift key, grab the handle, and shoot it up so that it starts following the path all the way. And then I'm going to grab this handle and just shoot it all the way down. In fact, I can't go too far down because it's starting to go off the path here. So I will need to adjust this one. So I'll make it a smooth one at first. Hold down the Option key on a Mac or Alt key on a PC. Bring this in just a little bit. And you'll notice that I do have a flat spot right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the Plus key so that I get the Add an Anchor Point tool. And I'm going to just click an anchor point right there. Because this section of the path was already curved, when I added the anchor point here, the handles already appeared. So Illustrator assumes that you want this section of the path to be curved so it gives you a smooth anchor point so that you can work a little faster. I'm going to press the A key to get the direct selection tool and then I'm going to hold down the shift key because I can tell that's a flat area. I want to hold down the shift key so that I can constrain the handle to the horizontal axis. And I'll put it right about there. Then I want to go back to this anchor point and just bring it up a little and bring this one out a little more and then I can bring this one out up just I'm going to bring it in a little more so that I can bring this one out just a hair more and you'll notice that it's starting to really balance out every time I just have to adjust it just a little bit so that looks good enough to me and then I'm going to actually lose this one here because I don't really need it I'm going to pull this in and then this anchor point, I'm going to just pull in a little bit here. We'll see. You can, you can go all the way like that if you want, or you can do what I did on that bottom anchor point. And then I'm going to grab this one here, hold down the shift key so it constrains to the vertical axis, pull down a little bit, and then I can just bring this up just a hair and kind of wiggle it until I get it right in position. And then this top part, I'm going to pull up until it fits right there. So that is how you can work with anchor points and the pen tool on curving paths. It's very helpful when you get uh, images from clients that need to be redone, logos, whatever it is. It's very helpful to have practiced with the pen tool, practice on curving lines, uh, sharp corners, rounded corners just so that you can work efficiently on your client's work. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video, and I'm excited for you to continue learning Adobe Illustrator and all of the magic that you can create in this awesome program. Again, you can learn more by watching my other tutorial videos on Adobe Illustrator by clicking on any one of these links on the right here. And don't forget to subscribe below, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I try to respond to all of the questions I get in all of my videos. Thanks again, and go practice in Illustrator.